Alright, Dad, what game are we playing today? Today we are playing Dead Men Tell No Tales. I should say we're playing it again, because Dead Men Tell No Tales is a fantastic cooperative board game where everybody is working together to steal loot from this burning ship. We're bursting in as pirates and uh, trying to take over this skeleton crew and guards and grab loot and get off before a lot of things happen. Because like in most cooperative games, there's a lot of ways to lose and only one way to win. But uh, it's one that we have lost a, a number of times, but we just keep coming back to because it's just a, it's just a fun game, fun experience. All right, so why don't you tell us how to play it? All right, I will do that. So first take a look down here at what we've got. Here is the ship that we're gonna start. All of these tiles over here are gonna be parts of the ship that we're gonna explore as we go out until we find the loot. Down here is what we have our, our player board. So in this case, we've got three of us that are going in. Each one takes a random character card and their pirate dude that'll be going around on the ship. They get their token to measure their battle strength. They get a special item card, which they'll be able to swap out. They get their action tokens, which are great. And then they get their fatigue board that marches their fatigue until death if they die. So we shall see. Uh, there's also other item cards to be done. Uh, and there's more pirates. Like I said, there's random ones that you get. There's more pirates that could be in. And it plays up to five players, so there's a couple of other player boards. So for right now, I'll set those other player boards aside. All of the pirates get ready to board the ship that we have taken and that is burning. And what we're going to represent, each of these is a room, and the die represents the fire level. So for example, to start, that's at a fire level of one. That's not too hot. The other one over here, other red one over here, is a three fire level. We're going to have a two there. Ooh, and a five there. So I say ooh because if it ever gets to a six, the room explodes. And when the room explodes, bad things are going to happen, as you could imagine. So this one rolled as a five. We're going to want to combat that as fast as we can. And then we get a deckhand coming out this trap door. So with that, we get started. So on a player's turn, they get to do three things. First, they'll explore the ship. Then they get to take their actions. And then they're going to see what's going to happen, what revenge is going to happen. So over here, our first thing I do is explore the ship. I'll draw a tile. And you'll notice it's got doors coming in and out. You have to be able to place that so doors match up to doors. In this case, I could place it right here. So you've got doors coming in. I could not place it this way because then a wall would be stopping that door. So if you ever get to a point in the game where you cannot place a tile because it's restricted and nothing matches up, you lose the game because oh. you can't explore the rest of the ship. So there's loss number one. All right. Then the other thing you do, this shows it's a four pip, tells you how hot the fire is in that room and you can see visually it's very hot uh, that's going on. The other thing you do is you draw from the bag a token and there's various types of tokens and I'll take one for random. What we have here is a trap door. So another trap door comes out here and a deck hand comes on. So that's what's happened so far. On your first term, on everybody's first term, they actually explore two rooms. That's why I've got a couple over here diagonally. So this person's going to explore a second room. So we're actually going to have this one come off over here. Now this one's got no pips on it, so no fire currently in that room. There's a few other things out here. There's a skeleton crew. There's also a guard token. On the back of the guard tokens are the loot. And that's what you're trying to get at the end of the game. Get that and get off the ship. In this case, it's a skeleton crew. There may be some rewards on the back, like a cutlass here. Right now, a skeleton crew came out. So that's what gets placed on there. So that's how you explore the ship. Pretty simple stage. Then the next thing you do is you take your actions. What you have here is a cool reference sheet, or sheet, a cool reference card of the different type of actions you can do. Walk, run, lower the fire, eliminate a deckhand, pick up a token, rest, increase your battle strength, or swap an item card. I'll talk through each of them pretty quickly uh, and tell you how those work. So let's say, for example, here that we are the blue player and I've got my action tokens. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the ship. So I go in through the front door to take my first action. So I'll flip over my action token to know that I took that first action. I walked. The thing that I do when I walk is you get to move and you may suffer some fatigue. The way fatigue works is if you move into a room that is hotter than the room you're in, you're going to suffer fatigue. So this person went from nothing to a room that's a fire level two. So he's going to suffer 
too fatigued just by walking into that room. Wow. Not a good thing. But we know we want to get out to here where the fire is even hotter so it doesn't explode. So he's going to take his second action and move into this room. Now it's a fire level 5, so he took a fatigue of 3. And now you can see he's up to a 5. Now you'll notice another thing on the board. Here he has got to a, a nice level of 5. As your fatigue goes up, you're not going to be able to go into rooms that are on that are that hot a fire. So in this case, he is now in a room that's five. It's too hot for him to be in there. He either has to leave the room or fight the fire. So he's going to use his third action to fight the fire and reduce that down to a fire level four, huh. which is great. You know what? While he's at it, he's going to go ahead and reduce that one more time down to a fire level three. The other thing he could do with his last action is eliminate this deckhand if he would like to. For right now, we'll say we won't because I want to tell you another cool thing about this cooperative game in that if you don't use all of your actions, in some cases there may be not really think any advantageous thing for you to use all your actions, you can pass it to the next player. Hmm. So I could take my extra action, I can pass it over to the player who's going to go next. Now on their turn, they're going to get to do six actions. Granted, after they've been doing their actions, they're going to get me my action back, so I'll have five at the start of my next turn at least. So I'm going to pass the sixth action over to that person so they may be able to do more, which is a real cool thing of really working together and finding out what's going on. That is cool. Yeah. So then with that, after they have taken their actions, they're going to draw the top card here and reveal some revenge. What this says, this tells a color of die. In this case, this, this uh, goes, applies to both the red and the yellow and a number on it. So any room that has a red or yellow die with a single pip just increased its fire level. So this one just went from a 1 to a 2. So that just increased the fire level. The other thing it says is any skeleton guards are, that are on there are going to move. In this case we do have a skeleton guard out and they're going to move closer to the nearest pirate. So he comes on through this room towards these pirates over here. So the skeleton crew are going to move. Alright? Alright. Looks pretty simple so far, right? Not too bad, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a couple other things pretty quickly. First, we'll throw out a few more tiles. So anytime you either move into a room with a skeleton guard or crew, you automatically battle, and battle doesn't take any actions. Or if they move into uh, the room with you. So, for example, if I was in this room when he drew that card, this guy moves into my room, now I immediately battle. Here's what you do for battle. Here you've got your battle dice. And what you're going to compare is your roll of the dice to the number of uh, that's on the tile, or on the token. But you can see up here, the guard is an 8. There's no 8 on a die. This is where your battle strength comes into play. Ah. Yes. So down here where you've got your battle strength, you can add battle strength to your die roll. So if I roll this die to battle this crew and I don't have any additional battle strength, I roll a 6. In this case, I defeat him. He gets flipped over. And there's a cutlass. So now I could use an extra action to pick that up and put that on my board. What this does, it's going to give me some permanent strength. Oh. If I were to have spent some more actions, so say I go ahead and spend two more actions to raise my battle strength, I'm now at battle strength three. Suppose I am now going to run into the room with the guard, just for demonstration purposes. I can run through two rooms for one action. But I'll take additional fatigue. Moving from a 2 to a 4 gives me a fatigue of 2. Moving from a 4 to 1 doesn't give me an additional fatigue, but since I ran, I have to increase, I take 2 more fatigue on. Now I'm in a room with a guard. He takes an 8. We immediately battle. I'll roll the dice, and I'll roll a 5. In this case, the difference between a 5 and an 8 is 3. If you lose a battle, such as I just did, you take that much fatigue. Ooh. So in this case, I would take three fatigue. Heavy. But wait, you say, because I have a cutlass and I have some battle strength. So taking a look down here, I'm a battle strength of three. So I can take that three, and I can add it to my five, which now gets me an eight. I win. So my battle strength plus my die kills the guard. What it does on my battle track is once I use my strength, it goes back and resets. It would normally reset all the way back to zero, but since I have a cutlass... It only goes back that far. Now, suppose I had rolled a 6, and I only need 2 more to defeat him. 
and my battle strength is three, I can't only use a portion of it, I have to use all or nothing, or even if it was a four. So let me tell you what happens if he doesn't win the battle. If he were battling a skeleton crew and came up short, he would take damage. But the other thing that happens, as indicated here, if you lose to a skeleton crew, you then roll this dice die again, and depending on the result of the die, something's going to happen. You could cause the enemy to retreat, you as a pirate may retreat into another room, or you may have to fight again, or player's choice. So in this case, if I roll a six, then I could make a, uh, I could use my choice and make him retreat into another room. If I lose against a guard, in addition to taking fatigue, I either have to fight again or retreat. So if I don't retreat, then I gotta fight again. So a lot of times when you go up against a guard, make sure you've got battle strength ready because if you lose, you could be fighting to the death. That actually brings up another point because another way to lose is for pirates to die. Now, lest you think one death is end of the game, that's not the case. If I die, bad things are gonna happen, of course. I could fight to the death and die, and I'm going to lose any token that I did have. It's completely going to go off. I'm going to lose that item. Those are going to be out of the game. But because there's more pirates here, more pirates are going to be recruited. So I can then take a new pirate, keep my board, reset everything to zero, and start back over at the start. So I can keep going, which is great. And if I have a three-player game, that means there's four pirates in reserve. Oh. However, if all of those then die and there's no new pirate to take, then you lose the game. Big surprise. Yeah, another way to lose. All right? So that's how battles work. So the card he drew was a blank. So this says, any yellows that are blank, now get a die on them. So if this was still, if this was blank because we had fought off the fire, this says put a die out there, and you put a die out there in the single pit. The other thing is it shows a trap door. What a trap door means is more deckhands are coming out. So anywhere there's a trap door token or icon on the board, another deckhand comes out, and deckhands can be bad. The other way I'll show you how they multiply is a card that I saw coming up next. So on the next player's turn, they're going to draw this. So any two reds are going to go up in fire. And then this says deckhands spread out. They don't actually move from where they are. Instead, they spread in this way. Any room that's adjacent to a, a room with a deckhand or with a trap door. So here's a trap door. A deckhand spreads out into that room. A deckhand is going to spread out into that room. Deckhands do not spread out into other rooms with trap doors. Thank goodness. But this one will spread out to here. And that's going to spread out to here. The other thing to take into account when spreading out deckhands is if an adjacent room, say this already had two deckhands, it won't spread out into a room that's got equal or more deckhands than are already there. It only goes into rooms that are less. So there's a little bit of of hope for you. But as you can see, there's a limited supply of deckhands, and if there's no more deckhands Let available guess, to draw, you lose. Guess. Exactly. You lose because you're overrun by deckhands. So that's the importance of using your actions to eliminate deckhands along the way. You can't just leave them because you don't battle them, but if you leave them for too long, you're going to lose. So you got to keep plucking off deckhands along the way too. Hmm. So, so far we're not, we've found a Three different ways to lose. You ready for the fourth? What is it? Okay. It's going to be explosions. As I mentioned, there's powder kegs and rooms. So if a room goes up to a five, or and then uh, it turns to a six, typically you'll see there's going to be some room, such as this. Any that's a five, so there, there could be an explosion. So you'll look around, and you'll say, oh, there is an explosion here. This one's going to blow up, which is going to be a bad thing. When there's an explosion, if it's a powder keg going off, the powder keg is going to explode into the room by the door it's, it's at. So if this ever hits at a level 2, that's going to explode, and the room that's adjacent to it is going to go up in fire level. If there's no room out that door, you go clockwise until you find a room, boom, it explodes out this door, that one goes up to a 4. However, in a room explosion, if this turns to a 6, bad things happen. As you're going to guess, first off, Everything on the board is out for the game. So this deckhand doesn't go back into the supply like you normally eliminate deckhands. It's out of the game. Oh. The other thing you could guess, guess who's out of the game? That poor pirate. Yep. And it explodes out each doorway. Instead of just one like a barrel would do, this is going to go up 
by one. This one's going to go up by one. And any other adjacent rooms, in this case there's no more doors, are going to go up by one. And this is going to be flipped over so that that's impassable. So you can't explore it. So that's wow. a bad thing. But the other thing that's going to happen is you move, each time there's an explosion, you move the explosion token to one explosion, two explosions, three explosions. So any keg or room that's exploding, that's moving along. And guess what? I see a way to lose. Exactly. If there are too many explosions aboard this ship, you lose again. So there's your four ways to lose. So the only way to win is to get to these guards, get their loot, grab their loot, get the loot off of the ship. As you explore all the rest of the tiles, there may be a back door that pops up where you can escape out the back door as well. And you can take the loot out the front door, put it in your escape ship, essentially. And as you leave, you take a breather. As you, When you take a, a breather by getting out in the fresh air, you reduce your fatigue by half. And then you go back in for more because you're going to have a set a number of loot that you want to achieve. Depending on the, the difficulty level, you can set at the start of how many loot uh, you want to get in order to win the game. So you could start at the scurvy dog level and just get a few, or you could go for, go for broke and try to get more loot and get out the game. Uh, and we wish you plenty of luck when you do that because it's, it's a doozy. All right, sounds fun. So, Dad, what would you rate Dead Men Tell No Tales? Uh, Dead Men Tell No Tales, I'm rating a 4.5 out of 5 because I, I love this game. I think this is a fantastic cooperative game. I love the theme. I like the pirates. I like the way the fire represented. As you can see, there's randomness in the tile draw. There's randomness on how you set the board out there, what's going to come up, what the battles are going to, going to happen, the order in which the cards come out. There's so many different things going on that as a team you're really feeling the pressure all along about oh we need to get a go over there or we need to explore this area or let's get that fire level down let's get those deckhands out and there's still the chance of a die roll on a battle not succeeding and so it, it's got a fun tense theme that I really like and I think there's just a lot of cooperation with it and even though we lose plenty of times it's one that we just want to keep going at again and again so big thumbs up for Dead Men Tell No Tales. Alright sounds good. See ya.